Hello girls and boys how's it going So in 2025 everybody is talking about AI And I'm sure you must have heard this or even yourself thought about this Is it really necessary to learn coding in 2025 and beyond when AI can pretty much do everything for you Well I agree that AI is getting better at things every single week and there are a lot of tools out there there are a lot of technologies out there which are doing a lot of things very very efficiently there is no doubt about that but on that question of whether it is important to learn coding or not i have a couple of questions for you let us say ai is writing the code for you ai is debugging the code for you ai is even making design decisions about you then what exactly are you doing my friend who's even the programmer now you or ai in this video we will cut through this noise and confusion about how relevant is coding in 2025 and beyond especially when there are so many ai tools out there we will cover this from a technical standpoint and obviously from a spiritual standpoint as well we'll also talk about why not learning to code can be very very dangerous for your career we'll also talk about how to learn smart in 2025 this video is applicable if you are a fresher if you are an experienced person thinking toying about ai if you are somebody who's not from a coding background but wants to get into coding if you're looking to pivot your career this video will be relevant to you All right so let's talk about what is happening in the industry right now. If you are in the developerish space, let me give you a lay of the land. There is cursor or copilot where you can directly chat with your code base. There is replet where you can create full scale applications with a couple of prompts. There is lovable where you can create POCs in a matter of 10 15 30 minutes. then there are various agentic ai tools where agents can create your programs uh, they can write it write code they can debug it they can even resolve issues for you before you can even spell out artificial intelligence so yes the temptation is real some of these tools are really good and what i've just listed is not even the tip of the iceberg there are thousands of such tools in the entire ecosystem and new ones keep coming up every single week let's get you some basics i will give you a very simple test to do right now what after watching this video what you do is you take out your favorite editor code editor visual studio code types right and write a simple java program let's say to a reverse a link list right very simple program write that on your own build the logic on your own no ai nothing just pure old school code editor write that program then go to chat gpt and just give a very simple prompt uh, and say write a java program to reverse a link list you'll get that compare that output with what you have written then go to a replet or a lovable and ask it to do the same thing compare the three outputs your program with chat gpt with a replet or a lovable and what i can assure you is it will be increasing levels of complexity of course you might not write test cases lovable might give you in built some test cases but look at how the complexity is increasing in these three even with a very simple program next write a calculator app yourself without ai's help then ask chat gpt to write it then ask replet to write it observe the difference now create an even more complex application you know one simple three tier application which is containerized which gets deployed in eks clusters which has security scanning make it more complex and make the application also a little bit more complex add in caching elements whatever you want to add then compare the three outputs 
take some more AI tools. Here's what I want you to understand now very, very deeply. Just because you can get AI to write a program for you doesn't make you a developer. Why I'm saying that? Because if you cannot understand the code that you are checking in, that you are deploying, that you are maintaining, then you are no longer a developer. All you are is a typist with a good autocomplete. I will let that sink in with you. All right, so let's talk about five reasons why you should still learn to code, why it is still relevant. Reason number one, AI doesn't understand your intent unless you do. Now we've all been talking about prompts and this and that, but prompt engineering is not a replacement for programming. You still need to give it, you still need to give the agents the right logic, the right constraints, the right edge cases, the right performance requirements. And all of that comes from real world coding experience. You can't just fake your way into all of this. You have to code your programs to be able to know all of this in detail. Reason number two, reviewing AI generated code also requires your personal programming. We all know and if you've done my previous example of comparing your code with chat GPT with AI code, then you know what I'm talking about. You look at any code generated with AI and typically it has a lot of junk. How do you know it is junk if you don't know your programming really well? How do you know that the code written is secure? It doesn't have inefficient loopings. It is not just over-engineered nonsense. You need to know your programming to be able to catch these kind of things and have AI do a good job at coding. Otherwise, AI will just create a shitload of nonsense that you will ultimately check in and be responsible for maintaining in production. That is never a good idea. Reason number three, AI is good at syntax, bad at context. This is where we stand today in the mid of 2025. Unless tomorrow AI can scan entire business problems with the context, edge cases, system designs, logic, business logic, app logic, all of that can happen automatically given the context of your user story or your epic, until then you have to explain everything to AI, which means you need that level of clarity of thought, which only comes from doing the programming yourself. Reason number four, coding builds thinking. And I cannot overstate this. It is not about learning, uh, Java, Python, next beautiful shiny language. It is about learning how to think and how to program. Learning in conditions, learning in edge flows, learning about all of that. Because it's not just about programming, it's about problem solving. And AI cannot give you that just yet. And reason number five, as you get more experienced, as you rise up the corporate ladder, you are not being paid to write business functions. You are being paid to design systems that work at scale across enterprises, marrying most often the legacy with the new system. And legacy is where AI starts to fail because there is not a whole lot of context window for legacy for AI to build on. The LLMs are not trained on the legacy systems. They are trained for new age cloud native systems. And a lot of enterprises today still run a ton of legacy code. Also, when you're designing systems, you want to figure out, you want to learn how to let's say do pagination, how to do separation of concerns, how and where to add observability, how to do good monitoring, logging, alerting, standardization, all of that, how to handle partial failures in microservices. You need to be able to understand all of that. And all of that only comes from programming yourself. 
let me give you my own personal story of how i learned to code so back in college i was very passionate about java in fact i was very good at java and in the towards the mid of third year i joined a java training institute called cogent software which is in erendwana in the deccan area in pune and that's where i used to teach java i have taken a corporate batch for rmi and korba for zensa technologies also where now phoenix is behind baker that's where one of old zensa's offices used to be so several years back about 20 odd years back i have taught zensa rmi and korba those are, those are advanced java topics I also used to be a visiting faculty at Symbiosis for some time where I used to teach advanced forms of Java. Now because my basic programming is set to Java, even today when I have to understand complex logic, I always default back to Java because that is how I understand programming, that is how I understand programming construct. So mastering programming and programming construct is very very critical to you no matter how you grow in your career if this video is making sense to you i would highly recommend you to subscribe right now if you haven't done so already now let's look at why you still need to code from a slightly spiritual aspect let's go a little deeper into this now when you write code you are training your mind to be present to be fully aware why because you are thinking about conditions you're thinking about the flows you're thinking about how you will actually code this thing and that girls and boys is meditation in motion why because for those 5 10 15 minutes 2 hours you're completely focused on writing the program which will work well which will meet all the security concerns which is optimized code so you're completely focused you're completely present you're completely aware which is the basis of meditation when you stop being present you stop sharpening your mind and when that happens you just don't lose your programming skills you lose your identity as a creator let me explain what that means imagine a case where you have the ais of the world and all you're doing is writing prompts a very genuine concern which is now started bringing up is if i fundamentally love programming and tomorrow two years five years later i am not writing any code all i'm writing is prompts and i am changing my role from a code creator to a code reviewer then you have taken away my basic essence identity of being a good coder of loving programming then what is my identity who am i even really so don't let this identity crisis slip in stay in control learn to code learn to question ai learn to master ai so how do you think about ai now think about ai as a helper not as a replacement what do i mean by that what i mean is when you get stuck in a problem that is when you go to ai to understand a concept to understand how this particular function has been coded to understand what this syntax means let me give you a very practical example so you are programming something and you get stuck at a particular point i would recommend not going to ai directly i would recommend doing a google search let's say you have a syntax error right pick up that syntax error do a google search you will find 10 different answers for that read through those answers try those solutions you will know which solution works for you you will also know the five other solutions that do not work for you and hopefully you will know why this one works and these five do not work that is how you build experience and if you are completely stuck then i would go to ai seek the solution or for the solution that worked go to ai go to cursor go to chat gpt go to your autopilots and say hey help me understand this that is the right way to use ai especially if you are a novice in programming 
Now let's talk about when not learning coding could be dangerous for you. If you can't understand basic looping, basic recursion, basics memory leaking, basic containerization, and you depend on AI to create all of this, how will your knowledge scale up when you start working in a large enterprise? Also, how will you code review the stuff that is generated by AI? Because in 2025, that's something that you're depending on. What if it breaks? Then they just that code is not breaking, you yourself will start breaking. And that's not how careers are built. That is how a crisis is built. Think about this. Okay, and then now let's talk about how to learn smart in 2025. Number one, most importantly, stop memorizing syntax. If in an interview you are asked to write the exact syntax, you can say, hey, I might not know the exact syntax. I can give you pseudocode because today's editors are driven to correct my little nuances in the syntax. If somebody insists on writing the perfect syntax, that might not be the right place for you anyways. So stop wasting time in memorizing syntax. Start learning about the concepts of programming and how it is implemented in various situations. Focus on things like problem solving, system design, debugging, observability and more important than all of this is explaining what you're building start building on your own when you're stuck take ai's help and then come back and continue building on your own of course this advice depends on your personal situation and your level of expertise if you're a seasoned programmer use ai to use to increase your competitive edge for example, you can ask AI about corner edge cases that you probably haven't covered. You can ask it to do a security review if you followed all security guidelines. You can ask it for optimizing your code and see if it can rewrite a function in a more optimal way, reducing the number of hops, reducing the number of recursions, things like that. So take AI's help to make your code better, but make sure you understand what it is doing. If you're a novice, I would highly recommend not getting addicted to AI. You can use Copilot, Cursor, whatever you want, but don't let them replace you. Let them be your accelerators, not your anchors. Hope this video made sense. And if you've not subscribed yet, I would highly recommend you to subscribe. For you, it's a click. For me and my team, it gives us a lot of confidence that you are resonating to the content that we take so much efforts to produce. Click on the next video, which will talk about how to select some projects for open source contributions, where you can try these kind of pair programming with AI. Watch that video and I'll catch you in the next one.